Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to another and last episode of this calendar year, uh, 15 Good Minutes. That's what we're coming to you on for, for a couple of reasons. We'll dive into that. Um, today, I'm just going to kind of get the guy's opinion on a few of, um, I'll say, the most memorable things that happened in sports this year. Just, you know, they've had, they, I intentionally did not coordinate this piece with, with JR and Freddie because, you know, they, they consume a ton. Uh, so I'm just going to be throwing some stuff out, you know, weighing on what you want to weigh in on, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get it cracking right away. Now, I, this list isn't all inclusive. It's just some of the things that, that I thought would be good um, conversation starters. All right, so I'm going to start with you, Freddie. Um, Shikari Richardson, she, she came back in uh, 2023. Your thoughts, your thoughts on that? Has she stopped smoking weed? I, I I don't I don't know if that's a requirement. <laughs> I mean I mean I mean I'm not knocking the sister if she if she if she does. I'm just yeah, you stop smoking weed. I mean, uh, but what the Olympics is what 2024? You know, in Paris, coming up in France, yeah. You know, um, I, I don't know if they change the regulations and testings and and the you know the status of marriage. you know she's gonna be tested more than everybody. Right. We you know, know this. And, you know, stay clean, sis. You know, go ahead, do your thing. Yeah, and, your thoughts. Ms. Richardson came back in 23. You good with it? I, yeah, I mean, I'm, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm good with her coming back. I, I I think she learned a little humil- hum- humility in, in, that, in her situation. Uh, and I think when they won that, the last race, they win the women's for one by 100, whatever. She, uh, she looked a lot better. She didn't look into the stands first. She celebrated with her teammates, and I thought that was really telling. Instead of looking for your family, you mean, we all know you love your family. Everyone deserves a second chance. Some people even a, 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 a triple chance. But I, I think I think she learned a lot from her situation, and I think that's why she really got on got on ball and did what she took care of business. Yeah, man. You know, I'm glad she's back. Hope she makes the most of the opportunity. Yeah. Um. Sticking with you, Jr. Next up, uh, 2023, LeBron James became the all-time leading scorer in the NBA. Okay, it's it. it I mean, it, he's memorable, it. right? He, you you yeah. seem like it's a letdown. It's, yeah. it's a big he, deal, right? He had to put no. He had to put the ball in the net, and that's what he does. So, I mean, I'm, I'm happy for him. Uh, you know, which each era, somebody else sets a record. Some records last longer than others. Uh, I think this one will be around a while, bro. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be around a while, you know. Uh, but but I'm happy for him. I just, you know, I, I'm just, I I I just have feelings some aspects because he jumped from team to team to team. You know what I'm saying? He's not alone in that regard. I know, I know. But but I'm I'm just saying his Hall of Fame is is, is going to be something else. He's gonna have like six jerseys. Okay, I'm good. So, Freddie Jr., um, feeling some kind of way about LBJ and the point scoring. What, what, what's your status on him, man? I mean, he can play for the, you know, the the Los Angeles uh, bombs. And, you know, the reality of it is he, he puts the ball in the net, you know. And, um, I, I think it really it, it speaks to when you think of all the, you know, you know, some of the great scores in the NBA, in the NBA history. Um, whether you have Kevin Durant, Kobe Bryant, Clay Thompson, Michael Jordan, the one thing that LeBron that sets LeBron apart from all of them, he never really had a season ending injury. And I think that's a that's a testament to one, him being able to score the basketball and then his health. And, and he's been able to dodge that that health thing. So, you know, um, no better person to to break that record than him. Yeah, I I I gotta say, man, you know, to be playing the way he's playing at the age that he's playing, I haven't seen that done by anybody. And here's the thing: he didn't break the record, and now he's sitting on 15 good minutes with us. He's he's still out there balling and still has some time left. That's why um, the reason that I say I don't think it'll be broken. And again, not in our generation, Jr. Is you know he started playing right out of high school. Number one, they rely on him heavily. He's not one. You know, he was he didn't come up in the era of the um. What do you call it, Freddie? Loading something? Load loading. management. Oh, yeah, thank you. He didn't come up in that era. So um, hats off to him. I think a job well done. Um, this next one I'm going to lead off with, um, which was really important to me. I'm watching 
Uh, Coco Golf won her first Grand Slam title. I think it was I think it was huge. Uh, I remember uh, you know me and D were traveling at the time. Um, I think we were in the in the Bahamas and coming back, but we were fixated on it from you know uh, from the resort from e- everywhere that we were at. She played well, and she had to come over some adversity, Freddie. You know what I'm saying? In other words, um, she got down, lost a set, you know, and for once didn't implode, as it were. Uh, played like a champion, and and I think she's um, only only scratching the surface of of, of what she could do. Um, your thoughts on Coco and her first big Grand Slam win? Uh, well, I think it's it's good, it's great for her because she you know she took her her past um, struggles and disappointments, and she used that. It, it, it's what you expect, right? Um, very seldom do a young player. You know, in any sport, it's so such a young age get to the top, and they win it all at one time. Sometimes it, you have to take your, your you know your knocks, your your bumps, your, bru- your bruises, and she came back, and um and it, it just goes to her training, her work ethic, and her maturity. You know, that's a big piece, she, in you it. know, and I, I think that is what helped her. If she continues to stay healthy and continue to get better, um. You know, she could be the next uh, Venus Williams. So, Jr., do you 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 watch that same matchup yeah. that we did? What are your thoughts on Coco? Well, what what I what I what I liked about it was that even when she was upset, she was prof- you know professional in the way she responded. Like to the judge, there was one call that 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 old girl kept doing, and she complained about it, but she didn't really. She just was saying, you know. So and so's doing. She was that. respectful, yeah. but she held her point. Yes, she held her point. And I thought that showed what, what Freddie was saying, maturity. And so I, I thought that uh, she she did a good job, and uh, I'm, I'm, I was proud of her. You know, uh, just as a tennis player, I'm not going to say as a black tennis player, even though you know I'm I'm happy that <laughs> I think I think you just said it, but okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, you did. I, yeah, <laughs> I'll say this. I think the one thing that I hope she recognizes now is that she has become the hunted. Right. She's not the hunter anymore. Uh, I like the way she's beefed up her coaching staff and wish her um, nothing, nothing but the best. Sticking with you, um, Jr. The, you know, LSU won a championship college uh, led by Angel Reese. Um, any significance in how well they played? I will say, at least going in for me, I thought that um, I thought South Carolina was the was the odds on favorite. So for me, what LSU did was was. Um, Pretty significant. Your thoughts? Well, I only watched the, the. I didn't watch them all season, but I did watch the. You know that particular thing, and uh, I thought that they did play well. I think that they uh, they didn't give up on themselves against the other the other the young lady who's supposed to be the superstar. You know the girl with this Iowa, right? Yeah, Caitlin. Iowa. Caitlin Clark. <laughs> yeah. So you know, uh, I I just think that the they didn't count themselves out. They just played ball. And I, I like their coach. You know, she's a little flashy, but uh she she knew how to put put the pieces together. To Kim 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 gonna come with the, with with the color. She gonna... Yeah, yes, yeah. You know, so but, <laughs> but I, I thought I thought it was a good they 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 did well. Freddie, did LSU's um um surprise you? Did you have them as a you know as an odds on favorite for the championship going in? Going into the season or to the tournament? Into the tournament. I definitely thought they could. Um, based off what they did the entire year. I watched more of women's basketball last year than I did men's. And I thought that it was good for the game. One more thing in women's basketball that was important, um, significant, I think, was uh, the return of Brittany Griner, JR. She came yeah. back uh, 294 days uh, detained. She came back. She played. Um, your thoughts on her return to the U.S. and to the WNBA? You know, uh, I thought it was great that uh, she, that that she returned. Uh, I feel for the, the 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 folks that were left behind. You know, uh, and she came home ahead of. Uh, I think that uh, it was good. It was it was good for everybody all around, except for the families that, like I said, that that their people didn't come back. Uh, you know, I think the whole. I think all of our sports should think about whether they go to these countries, like, you know, certain countries that we're not really friendly, friendly with. And, uh, 
you know, just 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 limit their services to them if they're going to go at all. I can't go to a place where I might I mean, I might throw a piece of bubble gum in the wrong trash can. And now now, you know, I'm, I'm breaking rocks. Are you making enough money like a regular Joe? Because if you are, then that decision weighs, weighs a lot on me because she didn't bring her, her spouse. She, she just went by herself. So you got. Well, I mean, going back to Freddie's mind. point, WNBA makes no money. You know, she mm -hmm. she was over there like a lot of other people. As soon as that WNBA season's over, they playing year round. When I say they make no money, I mean less than regular Joes. So sometimes you can't bring a family because that's an out of pocket expense. Everything you do to supplement your income. Now I'm not condoning what happened. It got her arrested. But yeah. I want to make sure we're, we're, we're clear. This was not a. She's she's not rich by any yeah. stretch of the imagination based on what she makes. In the U.S., she did the damn crime. Damn it, you got to do the time. I mean, you. I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, she got out. You know, whatever the case may. You know, the prison or exchange or whatever is because she was a a figure in society that that, that is viewed, and you had the sports world, and and you know everybody got behind it and everything, whatever. Cool. I get it. I, I mean, let's, let's stop saying she was detained. She was arrested for willingly breaking that law. That We can't say she was detained. She was arrested. Should someone in the United States get arrested or do a year in jail for having some oil or whatever? No, you shouldn't. However, you're not in the United States. You're in Russia. And then they can deal with you however they want to deal with you. I agree with some of it, but but not all of it. I, I don't think that, put it this way, when they showed the number of other people that had possession in Russia, none of them got a year. So for mm -hmm. me, that was strictly politics. I don't have a problem with doing the time for the crime, but I'll say it, this, this was bullshit. It was trumped up, to your point. They had a famous person that they could hold over the U.S.'s head to the point where it brought in the vice president and the president to negotiate that return. Um, I don't think anybody else would be going over there to play, but I don't like politics getting involved with sports on any level. And mm -hmm. if anything, she could have easily been suspended. She could have been deported back to the country. She could have been held and paid a fine. 300 days in prison, to me, that that doesn't equate to, but again, that that's just my opinion. Last one I got for you guys. Primetime comes to Colorado in 2023. Quickly, uh, start with you, GR. Um, Failure, success, or somewhere in the middle for you? For me, it's, it's somewhere in the middle and, and it's the lower middle. <laughs> because, you know, <laughs> the, the way he got there was one way, one thing. But you go in, he never said he's going to win every game. You got to build your program. And, you know, the first thing, the first thing Cass was doing was jumping on. We, we you know, we, we going to put him down and do all this. And, uh, I think he handled himself well. So, Freddie, um, prime time in Colorado this year. Um, success, failure, or somewhere in the middle from you? It was a massive success. And I say it was a success because when you look at sports, professional, collegiate, at the end of the day, it's about money and oh, revenue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He brought money and revenue to that university, that community, right? The yeah. likes of which they ain't seen. <laughs> to, to, to which they, they hadn't seen, right? You, you look at it from the standpoint of, guess what? He now has more commercials than he did before. His That's son, true. all his players, so anyone connected to that situation profited. I, I think he kind of put a target on his back to JR's point, though, you know, um, it's like, I'm not, I'm not going into a lion's den, you know, wearing some fresh cut meat on my back, but you know, he is who he is. I think they got what they wanted. They got the attention. They got the adulation to Freddie's point. You know, they won four games, which is a hell of a lot more than they've won. They had people in the crowd. They had, I, I'm trying to stay away from the word prime, but they had prime time games, right? <laughs> in, in, in Colorado, wasn't getting that. Dion now has a little better understanding of what it, what it's like at this level and where he came from, you know what I mean? Um, no one's going to roll over for you. He played, they played some good games, but at the end of the day, they weren't as talented as some of the competition no. that they had. We're not going to be broadcasting next. One third of the team is going to be in Europe. 
You can guess which one it is. Uh, it's not me or JR. Uh, nope. And before we get out, let me see if the guys got anything to say. I'll start with you, JR. You got anything to say today? No, nah, I'm good for this year. Fair enough. Freddie, how about you? There's a new law to where uh, you now have the ability to arrest migrants who you suspect are illegal. I, I'm okay with arresting anyone that crosses the border illegally. I'm okay with that. However, with, with what this law does is it gives law enforcement, border patrol people, or whatever the case may be, the ability to pull over or, or stop anyone that's of, of Latin American descent and say, hey, show me your paper. That, that that that's literally what it does, right? And it, it, to me, it's like an equivalence of what's that policy in New York City in 1990, stop and frisk, yeah. right? To me, that's like the equivalence of it. Um, so I think that that the the application and and the um, the interpretation of that law, that this new Texas law. Is going to be very crucial. What what if I I, I'm, I was born in Texas and I'm of uh, uh, Latin American descent, sure. you know, whatever? And you just stop me. Hey, excuse. let me see your paper. You know, it's, it's very upsetting, very disappointing. All right, that's something. To say. I got something to say too. I got two things. Um, first off, I got to change hats since it's Christmas time. <laughs> oh ho oh, oh. ho! I'm half of the half of the crew. Uh, we really do appreciate all you guys. Want to say Merry Christmas uh, and a Happy New Year. Uh, my, I got something to say here is, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the commercial, but it's pretty cool. Uh, all these old rock stars come up and say, please stop saying you are, you're a rock star. Like the business people, you know, somebody gives a good PowerPoint presentation. And then you got the guy from Kiss or Ozzy Osbourne coming in saying, you, you're really not a rock star. My thing is, I would like athletes, both collegiate and pro, to stop saying we, we were in a hostile environment. You watch these games afterwards and they say, how'd you do coach? Well, we had to do this and we had to come to a hostile environment. I'm like, that is not a hostile environment. If somebody paid $300 for tickets to come in there and have a few beers and yell at you, that's what fans do. Your fans do the same thing. If you want to know what a hostile environment is in sports, um, go to some, some, some certain soccer games in Europe, you know, where, where things can get go south pretty quickly. But if you're in a place that is serving you a meal before you take the field and after you take the field and it's a catered spread. It's not hostile. Say I came into a loud environment, a competitive environment, but just like Ozzy Osbourne, and those guys don't want business people to say they're a rock star. I don't want our athletes who get paid a ton of money to go in and play a game to say they were in a hostile environment. The three of us in a different um, time in a different world have been in real hostile environments. Like, no shit, hostile environments, you need to duck. So we kind of take it, I kind of take it kind of, you know, some kind of way when these coaches are doing it too. Well, you know, we came in, we played a hostile environment, but we got out of here with a win. Bullshit. You're going to get on a chartered plane now, right, and do what Freddie's doing on your way back to whatever city you came from. That's my, I got something to say. I'm feeling some kind of way about it. I know it's not going to change nothing, but damn it, pro athletes don't play in a hostile environment. It's anything but. Well, who put coal in your stocking? <laughs> <laughs> I had something to say, and it's still going to be Merry Christmas. So listen, um, Freddie, safe travels to Europe, buddy. We'll catch up with you when you get back. JR, thanks for everything this year. As always, appreciate you. All our fans, all our followers on social media, as well as uh, YouTube and Twitter. We thank you very much. And we wish everybody a safe uh, and happy holiday season. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.